Hello and welcome to the SWBN News Watch. I am Chimla Tiki. Thanks for joining us today. A lot has happened since our last rundown, so let's get you back to speed on the major stories you need to hear about. The current existential threat in Nigeria has gotten many frustrated. One Twitter user identified as S Boy took out his frustration on Pastor Enoch Adeboe after he made a tweet saying, All will be well. S Boy wrote that, quote, You have been saying this since I can remember. You are one of the reasons unbelievers mock us. It's so hard to be a believer and you are not helping with your approach. A lot of people look up to God through you and you say all will be well all the time. Adeboe went, unquote. Some Twitter users were quick to come to Adeboe's defense. Uh, one user identified as peaceful wrote that, quote, He's a man like every one of us. He's not God. God changes things, not him. He's just an instrument to God. Or do you want to blame God now or what? End of quote. In a tweet, Ebenezer Larewaji cautioned him saying, You better watch your mouth. You are playing with fire. While Fortress Etcher went on to advise him to, quote, Go to the altar of mercy and ask for forgiveness. However, some Twitter users criticized Adeboe over his silence of political matters. And a group voices Twitter, quote, with your level of hypocrisy, it won't be well. When Jonathan was in power, you marched on the streets with your members. Now, one of yours is in power and things are going far left. You are asking your members to pray. You are no longer leading protests. End of quote. Another Twitter user identified as Otef drew attention to the fact that Vice President Yamil Sibanjo was a pastor in the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, and also to the fact that Bola Metinubo's wife was also a pastor in RCCG. Recall that there was a recent social media circus over Tinubu's claim that uh, Adeboye christened him Abraham, the father of all nations. He made this disclosure while speaking to the Kano chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria. What? The way you pray for forgiveness is the way we pray for forgiveness in the Holy Quran. The day my wife was uh, ordained a pastor, oh, I was there. Pastor Adeboe gave me Abraham. I said, what's the meaning? He said, watch out, the father of nation. Still in Nigeria, in the past few weeks, Nigeria has seen an increase in kidnappings, tragic accidents, terrorism, suicides, and devastating floods. People are desperate for a change, but amidst that, there is a word of hope regarding terrorism in Nigeria. In the recently concluded National Leadership Conference hosted by the Emergent Church, Brother Sam Upola gave a word of prophecy in his words, quote, I was praying on the July 30th. I was on my knees when it was like the heavens were opened and it became so clear that if we take a stand, that in four months and in November 30th, that all the operations of ISWAP, Boko Haram, Fulani Headsmen terrorism shall be things of the past. That whatsoever remains after November 30th is under a curse. What we will begin to see from then is what looks like smothering because they will begin to wear up. Suddenly, I began to receive little pieces of information. You find there is a kind of war against them now. Some of them are beginning to ask for a peace deal. There is so much heat, but I believe that their time is over. Everything terrorism, everything banditry, the time is over, and that is the word of the Lord. At the time of filing this report, the leadership newspaper reported that 13 suspected members of Boko Haram who attempted to attack military cantonment at Wawa in Burgu local government area of Niger State have been arrested. Leadership gathered that six of them were arrested at a farmland in Wawa, two in Wawa town and five others at Gada only on the outskirts of Wawa town trying to escape to the border of Nigeria and Benin Republic. Meanwhile, the cable TV reported that troops of the Nigerian army have reportedly killed scores of Boko Haram terrorists in a gun battle at the axis of Banki in Bama local government area of Borno State. Still in Nigeria, according to Zagazola Makama, 
a publication focused on the Lake Chad region. The troops from the Army's 151 Tax Force Battalion in a joint operation with civilian Joint Tax Force CJTF attached to Operation Hadding K stormed the terrorist hideout at Gary Village on October 30th. The terrorists were said to also use their hideout to conceal rustled livestock. More than 15 of them were instantly killed. A source who took part in the battle was quoted as saying. In the United Kingdom, a Hindu of Indian origin has been appointed as Prime Minister in a Christian country following the ascension of King Charles III to the British throne. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is Britain's fifth in the past six years and has been described as a proud Hindu who took the oath of the Member of Parliament on the Hindu holy book, the Bhagavad Gita, and is known to be unashamed of his roots. However, concerns are rising over Britain's current trajectory from being a country firmly rooted on Judeo-Christian principles to being a country that affirms all faith groups. Recall that Charles had stated that he would be a defender of faith. The Guardian reported that in 1994, Charles triggered controversy when he said he would be defender of faith rather than defender of the faith in a desire to reflect Britain's religious diversity. There were suggestions that the coronation oath might be altered. Meanwhile, in 2015, he clarified his position in an interview with BBC Radio 2, saying his views had been misinterpreted. In his words, quote, As I try to describe, I mind about the inclusion of other people's faiths and their freedom to worship in this country. And it's always seemed to me that while at the same time being defender of the faith, you can also be protector of faiths, end of quote. Reacting to the appointment of a Hindu Prime Minister in the United Kingdom, Tim Diep, head of public policy for Christian Concern, wrote in a commentary that having a Hindu Prime Minister is a sign of the times. He compares this historic move to how Israel backslided and turned away from the only true God and went after gods that are no gods. In his words, quote, having a Hindu Prime Minister who has described the UK as a secular country is surely a landmark moment marking how far this nation has gone in turning away from the true God and of hope. However, Diep went to say that went on to say that Christians are instructed to obey governing authorities whether they are Christians or not. As Christians are quote, while we lament the Prime Minister not being Christian, we also honor and respect him and pray for him. In an ideal world, we would love to see a professing Christian as Prime Minister, someone who will unashamedly point to Jesus as the risen Savior and the Lord of all, someone who will seek to persuade the nation to follow biblical morality in family life, in sexual morals, abortion and many other areas we do not know we do not have this now but we can pray for god to raise up someone into this position and other positions of leadership we can also we can and should also pray for this nation to turn back to the living lord great britain was very explicitly and subconsciously a christian nation in recent decades we have turned are back on God and turn to other gods and sources of morality, we are starting to reap the consequences. For as long as we continue to turn our backs on God, we can expect ever increasing problems in society. God's ways are best for the nation and its people. End of quote. Away from that, now CBN News has reported that an evangelical pastor has become the first Christian clergyman to be convicted of sedition in Hong Kong since the communist regime in Beijing erased the freedoms there, forcing the city to institute a sweeping national security law two years ago. 59-year-old pastor Gary Pang Moon was convicted of clapping in court and criticizing a verdict against a democracy activist, according to multiple media outlets. Pang received a sentence of 10 months for sedition and 3 months for seditious speech from the West Kowloon Court on October 27, according to AFP. Meanwhile, the Union of Catholic Asian News, UCA News, reported that Pang, 
told the court he would respect the magistrate's ruling. However, Punk said he was still victorious in terms of safeguarding conscience, defending freedoms, human rights, and the rule of law, while adding that history would acquit him. DCN News went on to write that Pang was arrested for comments he made during the hearing of activist Chao Hang Tong on January 4th, which was related to the 1989 Tiananmen crackdown videos and live streams on his YouTube channel. Marva, during uh, Pang's trial last month, he described the events as, quote, not just a legal battle over sedition, but also a battle to defend human rights and freedoms, a battle of safeguarding conscience, and of hope. Still quoting CBN News, 68-year-old Chiu Men Ying, a housewife, was sentenced to three months in jail for her seditious remarks in the same court. Both Pang and Chiu had been re regularly attending uh, activist trials, media outlets reported. The judge said the pair, Pang and Chiu, knowingly and intentionally made remarks that were seditious, bringing hatred and contempt against the so-called uh, administration of justice. Still from the Christian headlines, a new survey by the Cultural Research Center at Arizona Christian CRC University found that fewer people are taking their traditional moral values from biblical principles. The America's Values Study found that 71% of American adults claim to support traditional moral values today, including integrity, justice, kindness, non-discrimination, trustworthiness, free expression, property ownership, individual growth, and self-control. However, less than half of adults who hold those values consider biblical morality a core value. Still quoting the Christian headlines, the survey also found that 42% of Americans say that what you feel in your heart is your absolute moral guide to life instead of the Bible. Among those who rely on the feelings are 53% of people with no religious affiliation who say that their emotions are the arbiter of right and wrong. 51% whose core values are happiness, comfort, and equality, and half of which self-identified as LGBTQ adults. Meanwhile, the subgroups who claim the Bible as their primary source of determining right and wrong were typically amongst those who are spiritually or politically conservative. Commenting on these findings, the CRC's uh, Director of Research, Dr. George Barnard, said the findings highlight a shift in where Americans derive the source of morality. He also added that, quote, Americans have historically said that when they elect a president, they are choosing a chief executive, not a pastor-in-chief. But that distinction appears to be a passé. One could reasonably argue that the nation's ideas about right and wrong are now more likely to come from the White House and the halls of Congress than from our houses of worship. The laws of the land are replacing the laws of God in determining good and evil in America. And that will be all for today's rundown. Thanks for staying with us until now. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to meet next Thursday, 9pm. I remain Chimalachike. Stay tuned. Thank you.